Hi, everybody. I am happy to welcome you to Cooking with the Veg Coach. Sometimes we are live and sometimes we are just on YouTube. And that's going to happen today because of my busy travel schedule. I'm Ellen Jaffe Jones. I'm the author of Eat Vegan on $4 a Day, my first baby, and Kitchen Divided and Paleo Vegan, my last child, working on the fourth book, which is going to be on fitness. Why? Because I am currently 7th in the U.S. in the 1500 meters, 10th in the 400 meters, and I won't bore you with all the other stuff um, other than to say I've placed in, as of a couple weekends ago, 86 5K races for my age group just on plants since 2006. And I do this because my mom and aunt both sisters had breast cancer. I have three darling daughters. The youngest is graduating college just in a couple of weeks. So I'm all about trying to set a good example, be a good role model, and all that fun stuff. So um, tonight, also, I am going to a potluck dinner, and I wanted to share with you a few of my recipes that I love to take to potlucks, and people um, usually ask me for the recipes. And um, we're going to get started in just a second here, so... Yes, the first one is going to be the um, beans and greens stir fry. So I've already cooked up some wild rice and a combination of some other rice blends, and that's going to be the base. And I always like to suggest that you do these kinds of template recipes or just sort of basic things. You can always add different things to, and as you will see, I'm not going to totally stick to the recipe uh, tonight. Um, by the way, I am a certified personal trainer and a running coach, so if you have any questions, I know we're not live, but this hopefully is going to be recorded uh, successfully on YouTube, and we will upload it um, just as soon as I am finished here. We usually do Google Hangouts, but the last one we did didn't actually get recorded and uploaded, so we're trying it a little bit differently tonight. So um, I will put on my spectacular spectacles. And first, we are going to add to our main dish here um, about a half cup of water. And, of course, that means I have to find the measuring cup. You would have thought, oh, by the way, I have this really, really long cord. So I now can stretch across the kitchen like I'm doing without unplugging my microphone. Now, you might say, well, why don't you have a wireless? Well, I do. I spent 18 years in TV news. I have every tech uh, kind of thing you might imagine as we experiment trying to see what works in the new technology. But the wireless stuff is a little iffy sometimes. So um, I may disappear out of frame because like we used to be when I worked at my first TV job in Des Moines, Iowa for 18 long cold months and then I went to Miami. Imagine that. Um, we are a one-man band here, a one-woman band. So as you can imagine, um, I am a photographer, chef, and let's see if we can see what I am doing. All right, so the water is in the pot. Skillet, large, ginormous pot there. And next on the list will be um, two teaspoons of dried onion flakes. Now, one of the things I, I want to say that uh, the food is brought to you by Fresh Market. It's all been donated by Fresh Market. It's so cool. I, I can't tell you. I've been doing cooking classes for years, decades, and I've been trying to find donors to, as I have done cooking classes for other national nonprofits, that kind of thing, and then now for myself, although I'm a not-for-profit. I don't mean to be that way, but um, <laughs> whoever makes money doing this, I don't know. So anyway, Fresh Market kindly, generously donated food um, so that I can do cooking classes live uh, for real people, as I often do, or sometimes adjust for a live um, and somewhat regional and maybe even national audiences, uh, uh, audiences we go through YouTube, uh, the YouTube genre. Uh, so we're using minced onion, and we are going to add uh, two teaspoons. And you can use fresh onion, knock yourself out there doing that. Um, but the, this onion oh, smells really good. And what I like about how Fresh Market does it, they put it in these packets so you can buy in smaller quantities. And then what I do is I just put them when I'm uh, done with my first batch and I've opened it, I'll just put it in a little spice jar like that for the leftovers. And it stays very, very fresh. 
Okay, so, uh, let's make, well, you know what, you're not eating this. <laughs> so I'm just wiping it on my shirt, very shirt, a very clean shirt. I just got out of the shower, um, just went swimming, yeah. All right, so, we are putting the onions into the water mixture. And we're going to save a little bit of this, too, for garnish at the end. It adds a little crunch to the whole thing. And we're going to start turning on the burner here and bring the water to a boil. I must remember to turn the camera so you can see me. All right. And then we are going to add some black beans. Now, I know it looks like uh, I've been cooking those black beans all day, but wrong. It came out of here. Or Eden, organic, black beans, and, um, you know, it says BPA-free lining, and Eden is really big about advertising that, so you don't eat any more plastic than you have to. Unfortunately, there have been tests that show that most Americans have a little BPA floating through their blood, and probably through their brains, too. Okay, so the black beans, um, in the interest of convenience, are canned and in the pot. Next, we're going to add a teaspoon of cumin, and as you can see, I've already got it in my little can, uh, little canister, jar, whatever you want to call it, and I just actually cut off the label and put it right there. What I like about it, it has a date on it, yeah, like how many of you, <laughs> um, how many of you like have spices in your cabinets that are 10 years old. Okay. I know you do. I know you do, really, because I do. And who doesn't? Because we just hate to see good food go to waste, as my mama used to say. Oh my goodness, she used to say that all the time. All right. We're adding a, what did I say there? Come on, come on. Yeah, teaspoon. That's what they call Oh, let's just take off the top and make it real easy. Cumin is one of those wonderful spices from the Middle East. Been around forever. Flavors everything nicely. And then next we are adding, well, pinched uh, peppers, peppers, flakes, um, Pressed red pepper flakes. Now, um, I thought I had some already at home, so I didn't, and we're just um, going to use the mixed blend there. It's okay. And then next, um, just to keep things from sticking, now I generally don't add added oils to my foods, but when I'm doing something rather big, I just add enough so that things don't get terribly stuck. Um, and I have vegetable broth in the wild rice mix that I'm going to show you later. So we just do what we can do. All right, now we're going to turn the water down. And, uh, you know, stir it a little bit before I leave the mix. All right, we've got our getting everything into position. We've got our cutting board there. I hope you can see. And we are next going to do um, the garlic, which I actually already have cut up. We'll just throw that in the mixture. That's just one clove now. For something like this, if you're cooking for a lot of people, feel free to add more garlic. If people like garlic, you know, it's like, I don't know about you, but I keep hearing just all these different issues people have with food. Of course, you know, there's the whole gluten thing, which thankfully I don't have to deal with, um, but so many people do. And some people have issues with garlic. It's like, really? All right. So after the garlic, we are going to... Let's add our soy sauce, a teaspoon of soy sauce, and again, because this is a big group here, we'll add a 
little bit more, and we can add it later if we need more. And we're also going to be using it in our salad dressing as well, so um, we will save that for later. Next, we are going to add the broccoli and the greens. Now, this broccoli, actually both of these came together. Quite a bit of broccoli there. And you can see they are looking very fresh. You know, I just kind of hate it when you go to the store and like things look like they've been there for, oh, I don't know, days, weeks. So, back to that skillet. And the way I prepare the broccoli. Oh, and I just realized we have some more lights that can turn on, so maybe you can see what I'm doing. Hey, how about that? All right. Let's see. Spatula out. So I am just cutting lengthwise along the broccoli florets. You know, I was doing a cooking demo recently, and somebody said, "Do you can you eat this part of the broccoli, the broccoli stem stalk?" And you know, I always encourage people, because I was a reporter, there's no question too silly, too stupid, too small. And he seemed very embarrassed to ask the question. I said, no, it's really okay. You know, I'd rather you ask that question and then have your answer, because most people just eat foods that are prepared out of a box. And I heard a, uh, an interview recently with the NIH, National Institutes of Health Director, who's responding to a question, how come we have like 9,000 chemicals in our food? And the reason is because, he said, we have to preserve the food from wherever it was picked, get it here, and then it has to be cooked into something and taste like something, and that's the reason we need to have all these chemicals <coughs> to, to preserve the food. Okay, so there's your broccoli. Oops, well, no, that's half your broccoli. Yeah. So... We will keep shredding this here, and you certainly can eat the stem. Um, it's very fibrous, and I would encourage you, if you are going to eat the stem, that you cut it in really small parts, and um, you'll also want to like cut off this part here, and then cut it in small sections. So that is. Um, the reason I'm not using it tonight is because I am taking it to a dinner with people who generally don't eat vegan. In fact, I don't know a single vegan in the group. So I want to make sure it's real tasty and no fibrous stalks that they go, Ooh, vegan food, I don't know about that. I'm sure you all can relate. Okay. All right, let's get to cutting some other things. And Next on the list, I'm going to use my favorite food processor. I just did the Orlando Earth Day, and boy, this thing is really a lifesaver. It's lightweight, and it gets the job, as you shall see. Okay, where did my knife go? Between the electronics and all the gadgets here. Okay, so we're going to cut this little nubby part off, and everything, of course, has been washed hermetically cleaned. So I have one of the five blades on here and we're just going to process this. And you know, this is a great way if you have some marinara sauce, if you want to go lower carb, you can replace the grains, the whole grains, the pasta, whatever, with zucchini. And you can buy some very expensive gadgets out there that will do this, like spiralizers. Um, I've seen them advertised for a lot of money. And as you can see, this will do pretty much the same thing. It almost looks like Parmesan cheese. So if you're a recovering cheeseaholic like me, these kinds of devices, I think, are so worth the money. I mean, they're cheaper than an MRI, I always say, cheaper than a heart attack. So invest in things that make it fun, fast, and easy for you to eat very healthfully. Okay, so we have our zucchini, and that's going to go in our beans and greens. And then next, we have some mushrooms. And I told you I was going off the recipe, and that's what I'm doing because these mushrooms just look so good. And I knew that I was going to be going into a crowd that is um, not vegan. 
So, um, I wanted these, these uh, portobello mushrooms. These are baby bellas, they call them. They're really dark brown and kind of meaty looking. And so, um, I thought it would be cool to introduce the crowd to some of the things that vegans use to replace meat. And, of course, we get plenty of protein from the vegetables we eat and the beans and even fruit. I saw a breakdown recently of, of uh, it's actually one gram of protein in a banana. So even fruits have a little bit of protein. And, of course, protein is greatly overrated. So we're going to cut our mushrooms. Are you seeing that? I hope you are. So I can move the little jar we're going to use for our salad dressing out of the way so you can see. And snazzy, my little dog is hearing the knife chopping and he knows that's the signal to come help Mama clean up the floor. Because he's an amazing dog. Yes, you are, Waggy Tail. He's just saying, Mom, aren't you going to give me some of that yet? Well, I will. Just not right now, unless it's by accident. We are cutting up the mushrooms. Mushrooms are so good for your health, unless you have candida, and that's a whole other story, but we won't go there. <laughs> There's just all these issues. Everybody's got issues with food, but a plant-based diet, for the most part, is the healthiest way you can eat. And it's the best kept secret in America. Helps many athletes recover so quickly. I'm on these different sport athlete panels across the country. And it's just amazing how often I hear athletes say, hey, you know, we just don't have issues like our meat-eating colleagues and athletes uh, uh, when they compete. So pretty cool. All right. Um, so we added the broccoli, and of course now we've got the greens. This is some kale that came right just like that from Fresh Market. And we're going to put it sort of on the top of a little mixture here. And I will put as much as the skillet will hold. Of course, the greens and the mushrooms in particular will shrink up quite a bit in the cooking process. All right, that should be enough to go. And let's ramp up the temperature. the lid. I love my new long cord because I can just walk around pretty much anywhere. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, behind lid number two. Let's try this one. There we go. That's actually a, a duo, uh, dual purpose lid that um, covers the wok that I actually cook the rice in. So. And when I'm all done with the veggies, then I will put it on top of the rice to take to the potluck. And I may be the only person bringing something green to the potluck. I can't tell you how many I go to. It's just like all of it's pasta and uh, sweets. And, you know, people just think somebody else is going to bring the main course or the healthy food, right? Okay, so the next dish is the... Um, is my uh, easy bean salad and you can certainly uh, double up on the quantities here but I've already uh, gotten a head start with the pinto beans and I know you thought I cooked all these beautiful beans in my pressure cooker all day but no um, I am going to show you how you can get them to look like a pressure cooker cooked these beans these are cannellini or white kidney beans and then we have uh, the garbanzo beans. So the garbanzos, the cannellini or white beans, or uh, and then they finally the pinto beans are already in there, so I've rinsed them. Now I saved the kidney beans, the red kidney beans, or dark red 
dark kidney beans, all different things. And I wanted to show you um, the real trick to making these look like they were just cooked today. So you can see what it looks like. You know, it's pretty, uh, pretty thick in there. And when you open the can, of course, that's how it's supposed to be uh, preserved. So you can see there's kind of this stuff on the bottom. Maybe you can see that. And I'm going to rinse that out. And I have this nice spray nozzle here on the sink. I hope you can see that. And we are going to run that with nice cold water over the beans. Now, I may have to pick up the laptop here and show you so you can see what I'm doing. Well, there you go. And they're cleaning up pretty nicely. Now, there's going to be some foam and all of that funky stuff that just keeps the beans nicely preserved, so you don't have to slave in the kitchen. Of course, the pressure cooking beans from scratch is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. I love to do that when I have the time, but often we don't have the time. So um, this is just a really good way to do it. So you want to move the beans around to get all the water drained off, and then they go in this department over here. What I like about this salad is that it doesn't have any lettuce. And um, some other things we're going to add to it. People are always looking for healthy salads. Oh, one more thing I need to do. Um, I, you can use that. The recipe calls for four hook lima beans, but uh, I didn't find them, so I'm using shelled soybeans or edamame. This is soy in its nat natural state. Asians have been eating soy in its natural state forever. And um, their cancer rates are way less than ours. They have way less disease, diseases of affluence than we have. And um, that doesn't mean I'm a doctor and I'm telling you that you should go ahead and eat soy if you have a doctor who's telling you not to eat soy. And the reason you might have a doctor saying that is if you are, uh, if you are using chemotherapy, sometimes soy, some soy can interfere with some kinds of chemotherapy. So uh, this is a way so you don't have to actually cook the food. You can just run it, if it's frozen like this, frozen beans, under hot water. And um, you can see they look just like they came right out of a cooker. Mmm, these are good. So they will fall out a little more, probably, as um, as they sit out. Now, you can certainly, I'm kind of in a hurry today, so this is my fast way of getting it done. And we're going to add it to, oops, there's quite a bit of water still in there, so what I'll do is just take it by the handful and let it continue to drain in the sink. Now, if you have too much water in here from anything that may be frozen, then you can certainly use a paper towel later, but quite frankly, uh, when we pour on the dressing and it gets all mixed up, nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. So here we go with the last of the edamame. And then the final thing we'll be adding to this, well, two, two more things actually, is um, this beautiful corn. Um, and there it is. And I tell you what, I don't know. I, you know, it's organic. I believe, yes. So that means, in theory, uh, it, there are no GMOs, no genetically modified organisms. This stuff is so sweet. Oh my goodness. It's so good. All right, so let's carve out a little hole in the middle for the bright yellow sunshiny corn. And then the next thing we'll be adding to it is the red pepper. We cut off the stem, we core it, seed it, and that all came out. That was easy, really easy. So our nice, sharp ceramic knife cuts through this like nobody's business. And uh, if you are cutting into it and find a little pith, go ahead and remove it. And you can always cut around it. You know, the pith to me doesn't taste like 
anything I want to remove necessarily, but oh, people just get picky about their food. And I'm just going to check real quickly on our greens. Yeah, they're doing fine. Actually, the way I measure that is if I don't smell anything burning, it's all good. going to cut up the red pepper in small little chunks and then put it in the salad. I've already pre-cut some of the other spices we're going to be using in the salad dressing, which is a vinaigrette, a mustard vinaigrette. But the red the red especially is going to give this a nice bit of color. And in terms of expense, because all the recipes today came out of Eat Vegan on $4 a day, my first book. And green peppers are cheaper than red and yellow and orange peppers. But the red and the orange, oh, and the yellow, they add such beautiful colors to things. And, of course, what it means is they've been on the vine a little bit longer. And so they are sweeter. And we always talk about eating the colors of the rainbow, and that is what we are doing by adding all this beautiful color to a salad that has no lettuce. Now, you can certainly add lettuce because that's always good, and any way you can get folks to eat their greens, it's a wonderful thing. And I think we are about chopped up as we want to be on this. Headset as I look down is <laughs> slowly sliding off my head. That wouldn't be good. Oh, nice one. All right, I think that's enough. All right, let's just decorate around the middle here. I always encourage people to play with their food, be artistic about it. It's all about fooling the mind's eye and replacing the things you used to think you loved with that, that included meat and dairy with other things that are just as beautiful and just as tasty. And I think even in my opinion, more beautiful because, you know, people sometimes will say, oh, a vegan diet is boring. And I go, you know, you got all these beautiful colors of the rainbow. And in a meat-based diet, it's pretty much brown, brown, and brown. So look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Who could say no to that? All right. Um, let's see. What else are we adding to that? Oh, the onions. Where is my onion? is okay and oops. snazzy is ever the patient dog but you know oh, sweetheart you really can't have onions for some reason I probably read about this when we were just a little baby that the Allium family while it is wonderful and very cancer preventative or so the vegan doctors say against cancer, dogs, however, should not eat things like garlic and onion and all the things that are in the Allium family. All right, so we've cut little slices across the onion. Now we are chopping it um, across, across the length of it and getting small little chunks. Oh, yeah. And again, we're adding purple, purple onions. Of course, they're called red onions, but some people do call them purple onions. And we're chopping these very finely because if you get a big chunk of onion, you probably won't like it. So we'll spread it out all over the salad. And let's go ahead and spread this around the perimeter, the outside perimeter. Well, I guess I'm going to have to cut some more, just for symmetry. All right, we'll borrow some from that side again. I don't want to overpower people with onions, especially if this is their first fork into the vegan universe. I always find it interesting how some people, like in our area, people are really concerned about manatees. 
like to the point of obsession. And it's like, okay, yeah, I get that. But like, did you know that pigs are smarter than dogs? I don't say that, of course, unless somebody asks for my opinion, which isn't often. Okay. All right, I think we're ready to go to the dressing. And um, let me just check our stir fry. Oh, it's looking beautiful. I'll show that to you in just a little while. But let's go to the dressing, which is fragrant of vinaigrette. And um, we're going to use a half cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. I put, of course, three onions in here so I wouldn't forget them. Throw some of this out of the way. We already have the parsley in here, and um, this recipe calls for a tablespoon of parsley. Now I have two tablespoons in there because I think in a salad dressing in particular you can never overdo uh, these kinds of things. And then um, we'll add the oh, this wonderful lemon squeezer. We'll take that out. I love doing these classes in my kitchen because everything's right here. You know, I do and I've done plenty of cooking classes in other facilities. You've know, you got to put all this stuff in your car and uh, just, it's, it's quite sometimes an ordeal. All right, I am thinking I better, I'm going to put this in. For the dishwasher, a yeah, little behind, haven't unloaded the dishwasher yet today. Still working on that. Okay, so we're going to squeeze the lemon juice like this. Yeah, do you have to have one of these? No. Is it a good use of your money? Yeah, probably, except that <laughs> just be careful. A lot of this just went on the floor because I was so busy talking, I wasn't uh, paying attention to what direction we were aiming this. So. But it really does efficiently squeeze the lemon. So you can see it just gets all the juice out. And I think I'll go ahead and squeeze the second half. Usually you figure about two tablespoons per half. And it just varies on the lemon depending how juicy it is. And this looks like it's a pretty juicy one. So just to be precise, we will measure this a little bit. That means I have to find my second measuring cup. And it's probably buried somewhere behind Who's in, who knows what. Well, I already have soy sauce in another measuring cup, so we're just going to pour this in. Um, what I have to do. Alright, so that's probably about a fourth of a cup. That'll be fine. And then we are going to add a half cup. The recipe calls for raspberry uh, vinegar. And um, I am actually going to add the rest of the soy sauce to the green. So I can use the measuring cup. So um, the recipe calls for uh, vinegar that is uh, a raspberry vinegar, but there are many different varieties, and tonight we're going to use the pear infused vinegar. But there are just so many different varieties, like. Oh gosh, like uh, fig infused, that's probably one of my favorite ones. And uh, you can use whatever you like, whatever floats your boat. So for the vinegar, that is a half cup. And the pear is almost as sweet, I think, as the fig infused vinegar. And I love how these are naturally sweet, so you don't have to add sugar, any added sugar to these, these recipes. And the nice thing about adding vinegar to a dressing is that it keeps like the green stuff nicely preserved. 
So this recipe also calls for a teaspoon of finely uh, chopped basil. Now, my basil grows like a weed here in Florida, as it does many places, so I just went out and picked some earlier. You can roll these, um, you can roll these up, and I've got them all lined up, as you can see. I'm going to put them down on the cutting board, so you can see. Onion out of the way, and then the squeezer out of the way. And so you take them from the pointed ends and just roll them up this way. And we'll be cutting chiffonade strips, um, or that's just a fancy way of saying thinly, very thinly sliced strips. So we start this way and just cutting it along on either side of the stem, and then you can leave the stem out. And as you can see, there we have it. Now, I like to cut them up a little more than this for a salad because, again, if you get a big chunk of basil, it can be pretty overpowering, especially the fresh. You can use dried basil, too, in this recipe. No problem. So we will, let's put it right in the center, yeah. So we're going to mix this up. I just want it to look pretty for our initial tossing. And the, the trick to cutting herbs is trying to keep them dry, and uh, that way they will cut more, more serenely. And of course, you can put them on top of the salad just like I did there for uh, enhancement, or as we're going to do tonight, we are going to put these in the dressing. So we'll leave some of those there just because they are pretty. And then we need one green onion. And again, for the purpose of tonight, we're going to have two. Cut these very thinly. Because we really want to expose as much surface area of the food to the liquid so that it will infuse into the dressing. And if you see any wilting leaves, just remove them. Don't often see that with the stuff from the fresh market, just saying. That's one of the reasons I asked them to donate food, because it is, I don't know how they do it, um, one of the interesting things, too, we're going to add some strawberries and blueberries to the top of the salad, just as a little extra garnish. And I was in the checkout line, and um, because I am a donation, they, they deal with me in a different way uh, in terms of the checking out process. And the cashier goes, you know, I just got some blueberries in from southern Florida, and they just came in today, and they were just picked yesterday. Uh, would you like to have them? I said, you betcha. And sure enough, they brought them out, and they were bigger, and they just really looked um, so beautiful, quite plumped up. All right, we're putting the onions in now. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned it to my husband, and he, he had the same thought I did. We both did not know that, they were, that uh, you can grow blueberries in Florida now, which is really, really cool. So that's quite something um, that you can do that. All right, um, let's see what else we need. Oh, gee, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. And here we are with that. And we'll go ahead and maybe add a little extra just because we have extra to add. So here is one. Two. These are heaping teaspoons, I'm telling you. <laughs> and three. Yeah, one. And I our measuring spoon. Green onion, parsley, Dijon, basil, salt, and ground pepper. All right, we'll add just a little pepper. I usually don't add salt to my foods because so many people have issues with high blood pressure. They're trying to reduce their salt. So, I will 
leave that off and search for the cap and I know it's here in my next life I'll have a bigger kitchen right well the good thing is I've got this really long microphone cord Nub it, nub it, nub it. Here we go. So we've got the cap that's coming on. And now for the shake and bake. And there is wonderful salad dressing. Now I have, in Eat Vegan on $4 a day, I have an entire chapter on salads and an entire chapter on salad dressings because I really do believe that if we can find salads that we love or dressings that we love to put on the greens so that we will eat the greens, then we'll be eating more greens. And this stuff is so much better than stuff you find at the store, generally speaking. And, you know, you've just made it fresh. So how cool is that? All right. I think it's time. Uh, I think we'll put the dressing on the salad. And uh, I'm just going to put a little bit on, and then I'll leave... Um, next to the, uh, the big salad bowl at the potluck tonight so people can decide how much dressing they want. But I wanted to show you before we leave, oh, I almost dumped it on the counter. That would not have been a good thing, right? But um, tell you what, we'll slide it back this way. Pretty as a picture. And I will, much easier to move the laptop. top. So there you go. And we're going to put the dressing on. That way all of our greens and our veggies will be nicely preserved because there is vinegar in this. So some prongs and give it a whirl, give it a mix. And I can't move the camera while I'm doing this, but all those beautiful colors getting blended in. I made this recently and my husband went, wow, it looks like there's M&Ms in there. Of course, many of you know, if you follow me, that my husband is not vegan. So, yes, he would say these look like M&Ms. But he has given up M&Ms and lots of bad, nasty stuff since his heart attack last October. It's a good thing. He has kept his 40 pounds off that he needed to lose. All a good thing. All right, so that is our salad. And I wanted to show you, let's see how greens are looking. So I'm moving over to door number two here. And there you can see, just turn them off. And I'm also going to show you the wild rice that I cooked up earlier. Put that on top of my book. So there it is. So I'm going to take the greens before we go tonight and just gently put them on top of the rice. Oh, the other thing I did want to show you, and I should have done this before I mixed everything up, but managing everything. So the blueberries, I think what I will do is just spread this out. And so you can see it. Best fed laptop in town. So we've mixed all this. Now you can put this on a bed of lettuce, as I mentioned earlier. Need more beautiful decoration. But I always, um, when I go to potlucks, especially I pass out recipes, of course my business card, and I will also um, just uh, just encourage people to make this stuff at home, and oh, I want to show you, oh, I forgot to show you how big, um, first of all, these blueberries are. These are the blueberries that the cashier said you really need to check out. So um, we are going to rinse them off, and put them around the salad, drain them. As I also have some strawberries I want to put on here too. 
Now, some people say, well, you shouldn't mix like uh, greens and berries together, and fruits. But actually, vitamin C is very abundant in spinach. But the only thing that gets it out is when you add citrus to it. And uh, that's just one way that fruits are good with greens. So, you know, I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you don't have issues, don't think you're going to have issues. There's a blood test practically for everything. And now look at these beautiful strawberries. Yeah, pretty amazing. These are coming also. Let's see. Now, this, you know, the strawberry season in Florida is pretty much over. So these are out of Watsonville, California. And I know that California is really having issues with the drought. And, uh, but amazingly, they're still getting these beautiful organic strawberries cross-country, which is a beautiful thing for us. Very lucky for us. Um, now, you know, you're going to hear maybe some people saying, well, you shouldn't eat almonds. They really soak up the water. I tell you what soaks up the water is not the almonds so much as cows, cattle, um, dairy, and there are all kinds of charts out there now that really display this so well that um, we are devouring much more water, land resources, pesticides, chemicals, by eating meat and dairy. So I'm just going to put a few of these on and then do the rest off camera, but just so you get an idea of how beautiful all of this can look. And again, because it's a large group tonight, I am going to cut these fairly thinly and spread the love so everybody gets a little of everything. I'm sure people will be bringing fruit too, but it's just a, a way to decorate and celebrate the beautiful foods that are in the plant kingdom. So we'll spread a little more this way. Decorate however you want. There's no right or wrong. Just follow your heart and your mind's eye of what you think looks good. And this is all going to be mixed up anyway. All right, well, I want to finish up here and make sure that this gets uploaded and taken care of uh, so that a lot of you have the opportunity to watch it. So um, please feel free to pick up a copy of my book, which has the recipes in it, Eat Vegan on $4 a Day. Um, yes, those are fancy bookmarks, and I managed to spill uh, a little bit of soy sauce on it tonight. So one more book out of circulation that won't be sold to the public. Just one of the little expenses that authors often go through as uh, we try and <laughs> figure out how to get the word out about what we're doing. So um, you may also see uh, the Miami Book Fair International. I was uh, the only vegan chef invited to do a vegan cooking class there at the Miami Culinary Institute, which was just so amazing, really state-of-the-art place, and um, I got to do some recipes out of Paleo Vegan, so that was really a lot of fun, and only the, the only vegan speaker there at all. Uh, and they had two million people through there, according to their website, over the period that the book festival went on. So um, we're just trying to get the word out, be a little more mainstream. And uh, I don't know if you've been following John Stewart in The Daily Show. He um, is looks like he's going pretty vegan. He's going to spend some time, he said, uh, at a farm sanctuary that he's actually creating, he's going to create, when he uh, stops his... Um, is, is broadcasting, which is going to be mid-August. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with his bully pulpit, as the phrase goes. Some of us kind of wish that he would still stay on the show. Uh, but what are you going to do? All right. Well, I got to run, so I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them below. Have a great evening, everyone.